Lamentations 3 and verse 40 and 41, just by way of uh, introduction to get this thought going, here, as the pastor mentioned, I've been in the military for, uh, I'll, I'll correct him just because just he's my buddy, and November 1st came, became 18 years in the military, so that, that's a blessing. You get a pay raise every two after 10, but anyway. But there's something, uh, if you've been in the military, you know, land navigation, it's just a, it's a part where you take your compass, you take your map, they put you in the woods, and they, they, they tell you to navigate to find, your, find a, a certain point, right? Well, there's a, there's a little pamphlet, I wish I had it with me tonight, but it, it's, it's like the basic training guide for land navigation. And I tell you, that, uh, I don't know if a preacher wrote this thing or not, probably not, but what's funny about that is, like, the, the first step in that thing is it says, you have to know where you are. You have to know where you are. Right. Know your location, right? And then it says you have to know where you want to get to. You have to know what point you're trying to get to, right? And then, then you have to plan the path. It says you have to plan your path to get from where you are to where you want to be. And then it says once you get close, you have to be able to identify the objective. Because right. they, they say close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, right? I'm pretty good with hand grenades. Hadn't really been too good with horseshoes my whole life. So if your objective is revival, which it is, I would say that we're here for revival. You didn't come out here on a Monday in the rain. Uh, I, I would hope just to check some sort of religious block, but you came to get some sort of revival for the Lord to do something in your life. That's why I came here tonight, and I pray that's why you came here tonight, but you have to first know where you are. If, I, if, I wanna, if I'm out in the woods and I have my map and I'm like, I want to get to here, it, it is impossible for me to plot my way from where I'm at to where I'm going until I first figure out on that map exactly where I'm at. So that's what we need to figure out tonight is where you are. Yeah. We're going to read a verse out of Lamentations, then we're, going to, then we're going to flip over to the New Testament. And, and with the Lord's help, oh, with the Lord's help, we're going to tie this together. And I'm praying that it'll, somebody will get some help from this tonight. So Lamentations chapter number 3, we'll read two verses. Verse 40, Lamentations 3 and verse 40. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. We'll read verse 40 again. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now needy, humble, and knowing that if there's anything that's going to get done tonight, Lord, it won't be in the strength of this flesh, Lord, but it'll be through your Holy Spirit. I pray, you'd rest, pray that you would rest it upon us now. Oh, strengthen thy servant, Lord, to do your will. Oh, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and be turned over in your Bibles to Luke chapter number 15. Very familiar piece of terrain in the Bible. If you've, uh, if you've been reading your Bible for any amount of time, uh, we see the, the three parables there. The, the Christ talks about the sheep. He talks about the silver. And, and then he talks about the sun. Well, we're going to park on the sun tonight. And with that thought of where are you, we're going to see that sun. And he's going to illustrate that point for us tonight. And Lamentations 3.40 is played out here with this sun. Again, if you know the story and it's pretty familiar, there's not going to be anything that's really going to blow your mind tonight. But what I want to do is just present you some truths and some things that we can identify out of this story that hopefully help you evaluate yourself. In the military, there's the 11 principles of leadership. It's one of those things that they make you memorize. And, and if you've been in the military, you know that there's all these different things. But there's always been one that stuck out in my mind. And it's always the one that I kind of tried to apply to myself as a leader the most. It says you have to know yourself and seek self-improvement. So here tonight, I, I pray that we would just look at ourselves tonight and just know ourselves. Nobody knows you except for God better than you do. You can fool a lot of people. Sometimes you can fool yourself, but you know. You know, we talked about it last night about those private things that only you and the Lord know about. And I, I, I tried to get, get some folks to be able to deal with those things last night. Well, tonight I'm, I'm feeling led of the Lord just to, to take that a little step further and just find out where exactly are we at tonight in our spiritual walk where do we want to get to, and how exactly are we going to do that? So we see in Luke 15, we'll go to verse number 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. 
And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him his living. The first thing we're going to see here is the location of the son. He's at the father's house, right? He's in a place of security. He's in a place of, uh, of provision. He's in a place where his father is providing him with some things. His father had an inheritance to give him. So obviously he was in a place of means. He was in his father's house. Young people, when you're at your parents' house, it's a warm place, it's a comfortable place, it's a dry place. It's a place where you have food in the refrigerator, you have covers on your bed. You don't have to really worry about much when you're at the father's house. That's where he's at. And that's where a lot of us are at. You know, it's good that we're in God's house, but, you know, we're in the father's house and that's good. But here's the problem in verse number 12. He had far country thinking. That's the problem. He was in the father's house with everything that he needed, with a father that wanted to give him the best of what he had, but he had far country thinking. His mind was on the things of a far country. Some people say that it's, a, it's Egypt or whatever it is. That's fine if you want to say that. I don't care. Egypt's a type of the world. It's a type of sin. It's a type of death and destruction that the devil dangles in front of you. But he had far country thinking. He said, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me, and he divided unto them his living. Two things, or a few things we want to look at in this verse. First, he's basically telling his father, Father, you might as well be dead to me. He's telling, because I don't know if you know this or not, but you cannot give an inheritance to somebody until you die. You don't get the inheritance until somebody's dead. They have a last will and testament. And, uh, and if there's any lawyers in here, you can correct me afterwards. Please don't do it now. Um, but as far as I understand, that doesn't go into effect until that person has deceased. And then they divide unto them the goods that were left to them. So he's basically saying, Father, even though you've provided for me, <laughs> even though you've given me security and safety and comfort and all these different things, even though you've done all this for me, you might as well be dead to me. Just give me what I have coming to me. I'm out of here. Oh, that's a problem. And you notice what the father did. In the last part of that verse, it says, and he divided unto them his living. He gave them what he asked for. Can I tell you that God is not going to force you to love him. God is not going to force you to serve him. He is not going to twist your arm to do anything for him, to submit yourself to him. He wants you to do it willingly. Amen. He didn't create a bunch of robots. He created us with free will. So he tells his father, father, give me. He had far country thinking. He, he had seen perhaps on the TV or the internet or heard his buddies talking about how awesome the far country was. He heard those lies of the devil's sales about the far country. I'm talking to some teenagers tonight, I believe. Because he got to a point, and watch this in verse 13. It says, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. We'll stop right there. So not many days after. So there's a point in between him being at the father's house, between him telling my, his father, Father, you might as well be dead. Give me what I got coming to me. And the father uh, gave him what he had coming to him with his far country thinking. But it says not many days. So there's a time period in between where he had to stop and kind of think about that thing. He had to stop and go, okay, well, I can't believe he actually give it to me. Now, I'm, uh, I have, now I have the ability to go. You know, teenagers, you're going to find yourself at, in a very short amount of time with a decision to make. Right now, you're, you're at the Father's house, you're coming to church, you're doing all these things, you're trying to do things right for the Lord, but maybe you got far country thinking. Maybe you got your thoughts on something else. Maybe you got, you know, I can't wait till I get 18 years old, bless God, and I'll be able to do whatever I want, and I can't wait to sprint to a far country. Maybe that's you here tonight. Maybe that's where you are. I'm here to tell you. I'm here as a big warning sign to tell you to stop. You'd have lost your mind. Just stop. Because we're going to see how it works out for this guy. It says, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and he took his journey to a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Oh, he had fun for a season. Had fun for a season. You know, the devil doesn't show you what comes after the fun of a far country. The commercials and the videos and, the, and, and Hollywood and all those different things, they don't show you the result of the fun in a far country. We talked about it a little bit uh, yesterday about these musicians that have everything that the world could ever offer. All the money, all the fame, everybody knows who they are. Oh, they're living it up. They're having a blast in a far country. Then they end up dead because of all that fun. The devil's a lie. There's nothing for you out there. I'm here to tell you. There's nothing for you outside of the Father's house. Nothing 
except misery and pain and destruction. They're looking to use you up, waste you away, waste all your substance, waste your purity, waste everything that you have, waste your testimony, and then leave you dead in a ditch somewhere. Fun for a season. That all came to an end. Here come the famine. Mm. Verse 14 says, And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. My friends, I'm here to tell you that there will always be a famine in that land. There will always be a famine in that land. And it says, And he began to be in want. And he began to be in want. Verse 15, and he went and he joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine and when he had fain ha- and, w- and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. Get this right here. And no man gave unto him. I wonder if it was maybe the testimony of some of those men that got him in a far country in the first place. Maybe it was some of those citizens that, that dangled that bait in front of them to get him into the far country in the first place. And then when they wasted it all up, when he spent all his money, when everything that he could provide for them uh, on the, the lust of their flesh and everything else, and when it all wasted away, no man gave unto him. There was nothing that they would do for him. My friends, I'm here to tell you, in a far country, the devil is going to give you nothing. He was at the father's house, he had far country thinking, he had fun for a season, and the famine came, and it will always come. But here's what I want you to get to now. He finally came to himself. He searched and tried his ways. He got to a point, remember last night, if you were here last night, we talked about the mighty hand of God and humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God and how you can either humble yourself or God can do it. He got humbled. He was abased. Because of his actions, because of what he was doing, he got abased. But I'm here to tell you that that's the best thing that could ever happen to him. (laughs) That's the best thing that ever, you know, all with the Lord's help, I just want to share this, just a a little thought with you, take a little detour off of this. And and I, I hope you give me some liberty tonight with this thought, but I've always thought, what if he never would have come to himself what if he never would have come to himself? What if it would have all worked out? What if the, when the famine came and he just said, bless God, I'll pick myself up by my bootstraps and I'll work it out no matter what. I will do this thing on my own. I will make it in a far country. And you know what it turned around for him? Next thing you know, that the fame came and the money came and he had everything he could ever want. And he said, I told my father I didn't need all that stuff. I told him I'd make it in a far country. Yeah, the famine came, but I did it myself. I did it. I wondered what would happen. Look over in Luke 16. (laughs) There was a certain rich man in verse 19, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Verse 23, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. Oh, what shall it profit a man to gain the entire world and lose his own soul? That's why I say in verse 17, that's the best thing that could have ever happened to that kid. But hear me now, he didn't have to get wasted away in the far country. Listen to me, teenagers, you don't have to get wasted away in a far country to come to yourself. God is showing you mercy tonight. He is allowing you tonight to search and try your ways, find out where you are, where you want to be, and find that plain path out of the word of God. He's showing you mercy tonight. Back to Luke 15, 17. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Mm. You see, he's finally coming to himself. Now he's in a far country, but the difference is now he has father's house thinking. Now he has father's house thinking. You know, I'll share this story with you. When I was uh, probably about 18 years old, I was this person. I was this man. I was it. I was already wild before this, and I won't testify about much of that because I'm not going to give the devil any glory in the house of God. But I'll tell you, I was not living how I should. I was telling my father, I have everything. I, I, I don't want what you got. I want what the world has. And I left being raised in a Baptist church to go take my journey to a far country. And I went when I was 18 years old, and I could do whatever I wanted to. I, I, moved, I moved out of my parents' house without them even really knowing about it. And, and I was staying somewhere where I should not be with somebody I should not be staying with. And I had some fun for a season. 
Oh, but then I began to be in want. And this may sound silly to you, but I remember this vividly. My parents used to have a little George Foreman grill. And that freezer was always stocked with frozen hamburger patties. Somebody say amen. I love hamburgers. I do. And I remember being able to come home after work. And, you know, I didn't always grow up. This, when I was growing up early, and it, we didn't have much. And I, we ate a regimented breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that was it. We didn't have snacks in between and all that stuff. But I remember getting to a certain point where we were able to go home. And, I, you know, if I wanted to come home after work or late, late at night or something, I could go to that George Foreman grill and I could pull a burger out. And I could put it on that former. And I could, Brother Chase, I could make me a cheeseburger. And I could even take it to my room. I know, parents, I'm messing y'all up. I can't, I'm, that's just me. And I could eat my cheeseburger. And I remember being in that place that I should not have been with, that, the, the, that person that I should not have been with, 18 years of age, in a far country, and I began to be in want. And you know what? My mind went back to my father's house. And it went back to that George Foreman grill. It might sound silly to y'all, but it's a blessing to me to remember. And I remember talking to my dad because we were still working together, doing heating and air and electrical. And he said, I said, he said, son, what's going on? I said, well, dad, I... I'm going to have to move out of where I'm at, and I don't have anywhere to go. And I remember him looking at me saying, son, just come home. He said, son, just come on back. And I'm not even kidding. The first thing I did by my best recollection (laughs) is go to that George Foreman grill and get me a burger out of the freezer, and I made me a cheeseburger. And it might have been the best cheeseburger I ever had in my life. Oh, I've been in a far country, and I, had, and I had Father's house thinking. That's what this guy had. I'm telling you, God is merciful to you. He's got you in a church that was somebody preaching the word of God instead of out somewhere running the streets, doing things you ought not be doing. But is your mind there tonight? Where's your mind at? You know, you can be physically here, but your mind can be far from the things of God. That's for all of us. We all have to battle that. All of us. He finally came to himself. And he says in verse 18, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Oh, that sounds good. I like it. That that even reads good. But let me tell you something about that. Him devising a plan is not enough. Listen to me tonight. You thinking about what you're going to do with the Lord ain't enough. You might be in a place right now where you're like, well, I've got far country thinking, preacher. Or I've been at least thinking about having far country thinking. Or maybe you're in a far country, maybe physically, maybe literally, maybe spiritually. And you're thinking, you know what? I need to get back to the Lord. I need to rise and go back to my Father. I need to say unto Him, Lord, I've sinned against you. I'm not worthy. I need to go do all that, but yet you've stopped short. Yet you stop short. You stop short of verse 20 where it says, And he arose and came to his father. Oh, if that's you tonight, you need to get to verse 20. You need to start in Lamentations 340 and search and try your ways and return unto the Lord. You need to get to verse 18 and 19 and say, Father, I've sinned. I've sinned against you. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of those higher servants. Ain't it interesting how it went from give me to make me. But more than that, you need to get to verse 20. And it says, and he arose and came to his father. Oh, it's about to get good. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Mm. You know why he saw him? He was looking for him. He was looking for him. Can I tell you that God's looking for you? He ain't lost sight of you. He ain't forgot about you. He's not uninterested in where you reside in your spiritual walk. He wants you to come back. And he's looking for you. I imagine in my mind, I have a vivid imagination when it comes to reading the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I imagine that that father every day would just be out there looking out in the distance. Maybe his wife or his older brother saying, Dad, come on inside. He ain't ever coming back. He ain't ever coming back. He ain't ever going to come back. He's sorry. 
He ain't never coming back. He said, no, he'll be back. He'll be back. I'm just going to watch for him and wait for him. And then right about the time he come cresting over that horizon, he saw him. And right about the time he could identify who he was, I believe that he just ran toward him. You know, my, my parents were just visiting. A lot of y'all met him yesterday. When my mama shows up, I ain't got to run to her. I take a couple steps, brother, and she runs to me. She falls on my neck every time and <laughs> kisses me. I believe that's what happened here. You draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh unto you. That's just Bible. I told you, I'm not going to drop any theological bombs on you tonight. I'm just trying to give you some help. It says, he arose. When he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I like that. He had compassion. Oh, we ought not beat up the people that are coming back. I don't believe that's a problem in this church. So I won't spend much time on it. But just know that with the same mercy that God shows you, and God chose me and my stiff neckness and my hard heartedness at times and my disobedience. The same long suffering and mercy that we ask for from Him is exactly what we ought to give to each other. Amen. Oh, we love, we love to dole out some Old Testament harshness, but we scream and cry for the New Testament grace. It ought not be that way. We need to bestow that grace upon each other. Amen. He had compassion, and he ran, and he fell on his neck, and he kissed him. And the son said unto, father, unto, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, I believe he gave him the, paw, the hand, said, psst. Because you don't read anything else about the son talking after that. He's over there, he's rehearsing what he, had, what he had said he was going to say to the father. He said, I'm going to get there, I'm going to say, Father, I've done this, I've done that. And he got there, and the father said, psst, just stop. Go to the George Foreman and make you a burger. <laughs> and the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. You see, he deserved the attire of a servant. He did. He surely did. But that's not what he got. He didn't get what he deserved. Did anybody hear that? Did anybody hear that he did not get what he deserved? I'm glad that I did not get what I deserved. I'm glad that I'm not getting right now what I deserve. And I'm glad, bless God, I'm not gonna get what I deserve. I'm glad that I'm saved tonight. I'm glad that that robe of righteousness was put on me one day. On the 3rd of April, 2014 in North Carolina when I hit my knees and just, I didn't even pray a good prayer on things. I said, God, I'm done. You can have me. Amen. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's all it took. Just submitting to God. Amen. Something else here is, I don't think he's really had much left when he came to the Father either. He didn't bring anything to the Father. The Father didn't want anything anyway. He was just giving him blessings, bestowing on him the best things. Child of God, you need to get to the Father Amen. where the good stuff's at. This world will lie to you and tempt you and tell you, oh, how good everything is. It's not so. So where are you tonight? You're one of these places. You're either with the Father, secure, Living off the things. Some, there's, somebody, there's some of y'all in here right now that have the testimony that say, Preacher, I've never once left the Father's house. I've been, I got saved at a young age. I grew up a, 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 pa, a pastor's son or a daughter or whatever, and I've been, I, God bless your heart for that. I wish I had that testimony. I don't, but I wish I did. And if you have that, you need to cherish that thing. Let me put it this way. You deserve the same hell that the most wicked sinner in Alabama deserves. Amen? But you've been spared from a lot of the scars of a far country. So if, you're, if you can say, I've been at the Father's house, and I'm at the Father's house, and I'm here to tell you right now, do not go to a far country. Once again, I've been there and about killed me and about sent me to hell. Only by the grace of God am I here. 
youth pastor back in Texas used to say, Brother Aaron is just a, like a big warning sign saying, stop, don't go this way. And that ain't just for the teenagers, that's for the adults too. Because you can get caught up in wicked sin just like anybody else. If you think you can't, you might want to check yourself tonight and say, Lord, search me, try me, help me not to fall into that trap. Maybe some of you have this testimony like I do where you, you were in a far country, you came to yourself and you returned to the Father, you got gloriously born again, that's a blessing. You need to remember that, share that, and try to help others keep from that. Maybe you're there right now. Maybe nobody even knows it. Maybe you're in a far country right now. Maybe there's some kind of sin that's got a hold of you tonight. Remember what I said when we started. What, if your objective is revival, you need to start with getting some things settled. Amen. Know where you are. Know where you want to be. Know, plan the path. And know how to identify that objective when you get to it. I'm simply going to say this. If you're in the far country, come back tonight. Amen. Yeah. That's as plain as I can say it. Come back to the Father tonight. Do not wait. If you have no idea what this is all about, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to come to him tonight. Amen. You're not promised another day. No man is going to give unto you what Jesus Christ can give unto you. So where are you tonight? I hope that you'll be in verse 24. For this, my son was dead. And is alive again. He was lost and is found. <laughs> Can I tell you that we'll be married?